All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started and up and running with Adobe Bridge. First thing we want to do is we want to add Bridge to our taskbar down here because we're going to access it a lot and it'd be nice if we could just have it down there ready and waiting for us. So let's go ahead and click right here on the start menu in the bottom left hand corner and just start typing in the word bridge. And once it pops up right here, all you have to do is right click on that and choose pin to taskbar and it will show up down here on your taskbar. And then I think it needs to be next to Photoshop since they're good friends. So I'm going to move it over right next to Photoshop and go ahead and click on it and open it up. You'll notice right off the bat that my bridge looks probably a little bit different than yours and that's okay. Uh, to fix that, what we're going to do is we're coming here, go to edit and come down to preferences. And there's a few changes we want to make in here. But first, all, first of all, you guys, uh, you can change the brightness or darkness of your bridge setup. By moving this slider right here, wherever I move this, I can change the brightness or darkness of that box. And then this slider right here will move the brightness or darkness of the content boxes. And I like mine to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to put that down low. This the accent color. As I change this, you can see that changes this color right here, which is kind of cool. you got some lots of different uh, options here. You pick whichever one you like. I think I like uh, Ruby. Oh, that's kind of cool looking. Okay, and let's go ahead and come down here. We want to get rid of a lot of these. We're not going to use like libraries or pictures or any of this nonsense. All I want is this PC and desktop right here. Uh, other than that, we don't need anything else there. Right here on labels, we do want to uncheck this box right here. Require the control key to apply label. We do not want that checked. Uncheck that. That actually makes life much, much easier. And we're not going to do anything else on any of the other preferences here. So. We're going to go. We're going to go ahead and press OK. Now I do not like the default bridge layout at all. You can see this is the essentials layout. There's lots of different layout. Click on film strip or metadata or keywords. Essentials is the best one, but it's not good. I don't like it. This is where our image is going to show up, and that box is the smallest one on there, and that's just no good for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to resize these windows right here. We're going to start by taking this one and pulling it all the way down. We rarely need this info. Every once in a while we'll want it, but there's really <clears throat> no reason for it to be there full time. So let's pull that one all the way down. And let's click on this one and pull it way over here. And then we can even bring, this is even too big, click on this and bring this over. I can bring this one even more. Now my preview window is my biggest window, and that's a good looking man right there. And I really like my workspace to look like this. In fact, I would like to save this workspace just in case it ever gets jacked up, I can always come right back to it. What I'm going to come up do is come up here to my workspace bar, and I'm going to click on this little download, and I'm going to create a new workspace. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it the best workspace ever! Exclamation point. And then just make sure save window location as part of workspace is checked, and then you can go ahead and press save there. And the nice thing is now if we accidentally ever click on one of these and we want to go back to how we had it before just click right here on best workspace ever and you're good to go okay so I've gone into a folder of photos and videos that I have here of the cameras that we're using here and uh, I want to show you a couple neat tricks that you can do first of all if you've got a folder that you really like that you're gonna be accessing all the time say maybe it's your folder that all of your photos are gonna be in that folder should be over here in our favorite so Let's say this is that folder for me. If, if it was, I would just click on this and drag it over here and drop it in there. And you can see now I have a shortcut that takes me right to that folder. Do be careful that when you're dragging this over, don't put it on top of another folder because doing that will actually move this folder into that folder. So make sure when you add it over here that you add it underneath. See that red line there? How it's underneath the folder above it? That means it's going to add it as a new favorite over here. But it's already there, so I'm not going to do that. And now, anytime I want to, I can just click on that folder, and it'll take me right in there. Even if I've closed Bridge or restarted my computer, that set, that sole folder will still be there. Now, I'm going to look in through these files, and some of them I really like, and some of them I don't. What I want to do is I want to label the ones I really like. <clears throat> There's lots of different ways to label them. Well, you can label them with stars. I'm going to give this one, I really like it, five stars. And I'm going to do that by just pressing the number five on my keyboard. And you can see right there, five stars showed up underneath it. Five stars also showed up right here. And over here on the left-hand side under filter, 
I now have eight files that have no rating and one that has five stars. And this is going to come in really handy later on. You can also assign colors to the files. So if I wanted to assign this to, I don't know, red, I could press the number six and that makes it red. Or the number seven makes it yellow. Eight makes it green. Nine makes it blue. And zero doesn't do anything unless a photo has stars. So for example, this one over here has five, but if I press zero, you can see it goes back to having no stars. How do I get rid of the rating? Well, just press the same number that gave it. So this got its rating of blue by pressing nine. So if I just press nine again, that will go away. So you can see my ratings are gone from my filter over here. So let's go in and I'm gonna give a couple videos, five stars and one video I'll make, um, let's say green. And so you can see over here, I have the ability to only show videos that are green. And if I click on this, everything disappears except for the one that is labeled green. Or if I click on this one right here, it will only show files that have five stars. And then I could unclick it to see all of them again. Now, one thing you cannot do is you cannot show your five stars and your greens at the same time because now it's looking for files that are green and have five stars and no photo has met that qualifications. So I don't actually use the colors very often. Some students really like them. They'd rather use colors than numbers and that's fine, but don't try to mix the two. Don't try to make photos that have five stars and other photos that are red to mark them as your favorite photos. Either mark them all as five stars or all of them as green. Either one is fine with me. I prefer, I do five stars and anytime I'm making videos, I will use the star method. So I recommend you do that. But this ability to turn on and off to only show our five star photos is gonna come in very handy later on. So you need to make sure you understand how that works. And that's kind of just the getting started to bridge. There's a lot, lot more to it than that, but that's just gonna get us started and get us on our way.